Hi there, this is Sean, the Honest Book Reviewer, with another book review. Are you watching this video while drinking a martini? Do you have your eyes on a golden gun? Are you clicking your mouse with a gold finger? That's right, in this video we're discussing Casino Royale, the first book in the James Bond series. While reading this book, I had to remember to be fair to the book not to judge it based on the movies. Also, just to put myself in the mindset of when it was first published in the 50s, because as we know, books published many years ago don't always age well, especially with some of the characters. So keeping that in mind, what did I think of this book? Let's find out. Well, to be brutally honest, the first half of this book is disappointing. There's not much going on in the first half. We do get the background of the Bond character to find out what makes him tick. We do get introduced to some side characters and some important side characters, such as Vesper, who's the female agent helping Bond on this mission. And of course, Bond has eyes for her, and we all know what that means. We do get a few spies here and there in the first half, and you have to remember that Bond himself isn't a spy. So Bond is an assassin. And he works for the British government. Or the British Secret Service. But he's an assassin, not a spy. And he's also a saboteur as well in some of the things he does. We get one little action scene. So we have an explosion. So we get that. But it's only very small in the first half of the book. But most of the first half is devoted to card games playing these card games in a casino as well. I've learned more about these card games than I think I ever want to learn. The game they're playing the most, I think, is Baccarat. And I think now I could go to a casino and play it. I know it that well. Maybe that's what the author wanted to do, teach us something about the card game. But honestly, it slowed things down so much. It was very boring, very dull. And if the whole book was like the first half... I think I would have just thrown out my plans to read every book in this series. It would have been done after this book. Fortunately, the second part of this novel picks up a bit. So the second half is more thrilling. There's action, there's a kidnapping, there's a car chase scene, other things are going on. So thank goodness that Ian Fleming wrote the second part of this book totally differently to the first part. The way some of this was written felt a bit strange though. So Bond came across as being a bit slow, a bit dim-witted. He didn't seem to outsmart people at all, and if he came out on top, it was from luck, not from good work. I would have thought that the Bond character would have been clever, more resourceful, but it didn't come across like that at all. I'm not sure if that continues on with the rest of the series. I will find out as I read through it. And even though I don't want to compare the books to the movies, I'm trying not to, I did miss the cool gadgets. I'd like to see cool gadgets in the books. And I had the impression before reading the book that the cool gadgets came from the books. Maybe they did. Maybe they're in future novels. I'm not really sure yet because I haven't read them. So we'll find out. But I just want those cool gadgets. Just something to give it that bit more interest. We can't talk about characters from the first book in this series without first talking about Bond. He's developed okay. He's not fully well-rounded in my opinion, but he's good enough for now. We get a pretty good history on him in the first half of the book. It's pretty detailed, and we get the impression that he's good at some parts of his job, but he's not perfect. And we get the feeling that he's just starting out in this role, and that's how I feel anyway. The history we get is that he's been recently designated the 00 number. So he's still kind of finding his feet working these missions on his own with a little bit of help from other people, you know, some of the side characters along the way. Maybe that's why he comes across as not as resourceful as I would expect. So I guess in that way, it's understandable. Maybe he's just finding his feet and getting that experience. Vesper is the female agent that's helping him on this mission. Of course, Ian Fleming writes her as being glamorous, beautiful, 
all that sort of thing. And Bond's got the hots for her. But underneath all that, she's quite complex and she's quite mysterious. She's hiding some secrets and they do come out later on in the book. But I won't give anything else away about that. So she is a pivotal character in this book and there's more to her than meets the eye. I think she's quite resourceful and quite clever. She does have a few moments where she seems a little bit naive, but I get the feeling that's more Ian Fleming writing that character that way because of the times. I don't know if Ian Fleming himself thought the way that he's made the Bond character think. Maybe he has. I remember reading somewhere that some people have written that it's pretty much the same. Bond is based on the author, but I'm not too sure about that yet. Maybe I'll get more of an opinion on that as I read on. But in any case, this character Vesper is a good character in my opinion and very worthwhile in this book. The last character that I'll mention is Mathis and he pops in and out a bit, mostly in the first part of this novel. He's a side character and he's a side character that I hope appears in future novels in this series. I get the impression that Ian Fleming wanted to create this character as being larger than life. He is in a way, but it's quite subtle. He's got a good sense of humour. He's very dry-witted and his actions sometimes, even though sometimes they're subtle, they're also quite flamboyant sometimes and I just hope that that develops more. As a side character, he's probably one of the most well-rounded side characters in this book and I hope that he appears in future books in this series. When I was reading this book, I tried my hardest not to compare the Bond to the Bond in the movies. It was very hard not to do. And I think even in recording this video, sometimes I found it hard. Because the Bond from the movies, I've seen so many times. And the Bond in the books, this is my first introduction to that Bond. And now I think I've said Bond too many times. If I think about what people in the 50s want in their books, maybe this was what they wanted. I mean, they were stepping out of Second World War. And this is kind of like giving them... a uh, spy slash action story but also making it extravagant the settings are very extravagant i mean they're eating extravagant food people are dressing in extravagant clothes the all the settings in the hotels etc are extravagant so it's kind of transporting people from their lives into something that maybe they couldn't get for themselves at that time and maybe that's what made this book such an uh, important book and a big selling book in the 50s. I rate this book a 3 out of 5. I rate it a 3 out of 5 because of the second half of the book. Also, that history of Bond and some of those side characters in the first half do add to the rating, but mainly it's the second half of the book. And that action scene, the car chase, the kidnapping, they're the scenes mainly. And there's some other scenes that I haven't described because I don't want to give those away. But those scenes in the second half make up the rating mostly. I do plan to read and review as many books in the Bond series as I can. And that's books written by Ian Fleming and books written by people later on. If you don't want to miss out on any of those reviews, go to my channel and subscribe.